Hello, I'm Silent Death, and welcome to a comprehensive tutorial on Ethereum Aerospace Research, more commonly known as FAR. In this series, we will be covering everything you need to know about building aircraft in FAR, from little puddle jumpers to massive single stage to orbit cargo planes, what all the scary screens in FAR actually mean, and how to use them. To ensure that everyone is on equal footing going forward, we will start with the basics. Today, we will be covering center of a lift placement and angle of incidence. Both of these relate to where to place your wings. Airplane design is more complicated than rocket design. There are more forces to balance than just thrust and center of mass. In essence, aircraft design can be thought of as the balance between multiple forces. Gravity, lift, drag, and thrust. The single most important thing remains the same in far as it does in stock. The center of lift must be behind the center of mass for stability. Let's look at why by moving the center of lift in front of the center of mass. As we accelerate, our wings start generating lift, and that lift is applied in front of the center of mass, causing us to tilt upward. As we tilt upward, we uh, slow down, because we have increased the amount of drag we're producing. Come on. Yeah. And as we slow down, our wings stop generating lift, and we plummet to the ground. Much like that. If we were to start falling fast enough for our wings to generate lift again, they would just call us to pull up again and stall out yet again, and then we would continue falling. Thus having the center of lift in front of the center of mass causes the plane to be unstable, and it also reinforces that unstable behavior. In contrast, if we place the center of lift behind the center of mass, the force from the wings will want to tip the nose downward if we don't test the controls. Thus, increasing speed and dropping us towards a thicker atmosphere. Things that increase stability. At least until little things like the ground get in the way. So if we were to stall out with this... Though it appears to be a little bit difficult to stall out. Large scale stall. And then we'll just turn off all the controls. And it starts falling, picking up speed somewhat. It would help if we tried to control it a little bit. By pointing prograde. And then we can just pull out of that if we're going fast enough. Thank <laughs> you. 
a much more stable design than having the center of lift in front of the center of mass. Saying the center of lift should be behind the center of mass leads to the inevitable question, how far behind? The answer is a somewhat complicated and we will cover it in more detail when we discuss the stability derivatives. Now that we've discussed where to put the center of lift horizontally, let's talk about where to put it vertically. A center of lift above the center of mass will lead to a more stable design. Let's look at why. Having the center of mass below the center of lift creates a sort of a pendulum effect. You can imagine the center of mass like the weight on a pendulum, and the center of lift is like the string on a pendulum. The center of mass is pulling down towards the surface, while the center of lift is pulling up relative, toward, relative to the body of the plane. And what that does is cause the plane to want to fly level. Not touching the controls here. In fact, SAS is trying to keep it rolling over, but the plane just wants to go flat. This is frequently a desirable effect, almost always in Kerbal Space Program, because you want to be able to fly your plane nice and level without having to touch anything. Now let's look at what happens if we put the center of lift below the center of mass. If we try to turn with our wings tilted down, you'll see that we turn rather rapidly. However, we don't level out as easily. Because it's as if our plane is balanced on a point. Thus, having the uh, center of a mass above the center of lift will make the plane more maneuverable but less stable. Maneuverability and stability are polar opposites, which makes sense if you think about it. The more stable something is, the harder it is to get it to move from a stable state. The more maneuverable something is, the easier it is to get it to change direction. You may read somewhere that building a plane a certain way will make it more maneuverable and go, oh, I want my plane to be, be maneuverable, so I'll do that. You don't. You really, really don't. If you're building an aircraft in a Kerbal Space Program, it is most probably for one of two reasons. Either to fly around in the atmosphere for one point to another, for science, contracts, or just for fun, or to deliver a cargo into orbit. The cargo might be a satellite, some Kerbals, or the plane itself. In all those cases, the majority of the flight is going to be in a straight line. You want to be able to turn on SAS, time warp, and not have to worry about your plane. If your plane is very stable, you can do so. If it's very maneuverable, then it will require your constant attention to keep it on the attended flight path. here, see our plane, not very stable. You can move your center of lift above the center of mass by one of two ways. One, you can tilt your wings upward, which will move the center of lift upward. This is called a dihedral wing configuration and is the most common method used in Kerbal Space Program. 
Alternatively, you can place your wings higher up on the fuselage. Like that. This is more commonly used in heavier planes. Things designed to, for instance, lift a orange fuel tank into orbit. Or other Mark III designs. Now, let's discuss something called Angle of Incidence. That is when you pitch a fixed surface, such as a wing, relative to the fuselage, up or down, in order to provide more lift. Which may seem like a good idea, and in stock, it sometimes is. However, in Ferrum Aerospace, that is not the case. The problem is that the relative amounts of lift the wings provide compared to the canards and the tail section will change based on the speed. Thus, while this particular angle may work fine at one speed, at a higher speed, these will produce more lift and cause the center of lift to shift, potentially making the plane unstable. Thus, using angle of incidence will make the plane easy to fly at a particular velocity, but harder to fly at all other velocities. Given that aircraft in Kerbal Space Program operate over a wide range of velocities, this is generally a bad idea. As the difficulty in balancing it is not really worth the limited gains. That is all for this episode. In the next episode, we'll be covering landing air placement, engines, and intakes. If you have any questions about what was covered in this episode, please leave a comment below and I will do my best to answer your questions. Like if you like, subscribe if you're not, leave a comment if you have anything to say, I do read all the comments, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.